Hey, Steve Mignon here at High Octane Classics in Auburn, Massachusetts with another High Octane walk around. In this case, a 1971 Chevy Chevelle Malibu. Uh, this one does wear Super Sport graphics and the hood. Um, and, you know, we're not sure if it was a Super Sport or not. It doesn't really matter because the bottom line is these Chevelles are very popular whether they're Super Sports or not. And the vast majority were non Super Sports Malibus, but they take the same bolt on upgrades as any Super Sport ever would. Now, this one is a great example of, I would call it like a mid 80s build, and that's a good thing. Uh, one thing in particular on this one, I always say the wheels are one of the first things you look at on any car. And these are weld. Wheels, Weld Racing, of course, started in 1967, I think. Greg Weld, he was a roundy round racer, and he decided to start making wheels. And, you know, after decades of five spoke torque thrusts and Kreger SS wheels and five slot aluminum wheels, Greg Weld comes along with the first eight hole solid face aluminum wheel. Early 80s, mid 80s, these things were on every car. These and center lines were the two wheels that made your car an 80s build. And that's kind of what we have here. It looks good to me. And the beauty of, of course, the, uh, the, this generation of Malibu, these were built 68 to 72. And uh, these are just sleek cars. The world loves these. But you gotta remember, 1970 was a new year for the roof. In 1968 and 69, the, the window cut was sort of circular, rounded here, 70 through 72, they went with this more abrupt straight edge, but again, otherwise quite similar. Of course, 70 also brought us the bulged bodies uh, and the doors and the fenders, which are not the same as 1968 and 69. But again, just a great example of a day two, mid 80s super sport replica on a V8 Chevelle. Let's look under the hood. Of course, classic front hood is nice and long, rear wheel drive, American proportions and there it is the classic Chevy small block V8 they call it a small block because it's physically smaller than the big block which came along in 1965 now the original small block 1955 265 cubic inches by 1970 it would grow to 400 cubic inches and again the small block they call it the mighty mouse it's small but it's oh so big when it comes to horsepower this one has some classic day two goodies of course the aluminum edelbrock intake a little four barrel carburetor this one is an edelbrock also a square bore steel tube headers and pretty much stock under the hood, and that's just fine. Nothing wrong with that. This one's backed up by an automatic transmission. And uh, we'll get to the cowl tag and the VIN data in a minute. But again, just a classic example of uh, you know a wannabe super sport. Nothing wrong with that. And keep in mind, in 1971, you could actually get a 350 in a super sport as high performance and big blocks began to fade from the scene. But again, that doesn't mean you had to keep it a stock two barrel. This one has the four barrel, and that's a good thing. Let's look inside. You know, it's funny, I used to fall into the trap of, if I saw Chevelle without bucket seats, I'd say, there's no way that can be a super sport. Well, here's the thing. In 1970, and for many years, Chevelle super sports came standard with a front bench seat. You paid extra for the Astro buckets, and so not seeing buckets doesn't rule out super sport status on a Chevelle. This one is probably not a super sport. We'll get to that in a minute. That's fine. Again, it's a Malibu, it's a Chevelle, which is 90% of what you want. This one does have the convenient column shifted automatic up here, the Turbo 350 under the floor. And the beauty of that is you can get three people across from the front and you don't have to embarrass anybody by trying to shift your floor shifter. You know, it's kind of a nuisance. Uh, factory dash in this one, factory dash pad. And this is basically Chevrolet's mid-sized car. Hard to imagine there was actually a bigger car than this, but there was. The Impala, the Biscayne, the Caprice were about 20% larger than this. And this is a six-passenger car. Coming down from this, 1971 was the year of the Chevy Vega, which was basically Chevy's uh, Toyota fighter. Similar styling, but a much smaller car. So if you had a family but didn't want a full-size Chevy in 1971, you got yourself a Malibu. And again, the weld wheels on the back. Now, you know, Greg Weld, sadly, was uh, lost in an airplane accident 10, 15 years ago, something like that. But weld racing lives on. In fact, they're even into the world of uh, carbon fiber wheels to this very day. But again, the mid-80s saw these wheels, and they're just a classic. I dare say they might have some value as vintage speed equipment. Kind of a cool thing. Now, here we look in the trunk, and the beauty, again, of Chevelle is the big interior also a big trunk. A family could totally do a week's worth of shopping, put the food back here, go for a trip with maybe three, four suitcases and not feel cramped. Now this car has an amazing uh, bit of provenance here. Original paperwork starting out with this thing right here. This is the original dealer warranty plate right here. And this is metal. If we look on the other side of this, we'll see 
That's the imprint that it leaves right there. This car was originally sold in Pennsylvania, and this is the original warranty paper. So that's kind of cool. This has been with this car since it was new. In fact, the car was sold new in Pennsylvania to apparently Don Newman, September 13th, 1971. And this right here is the Chevrolet Passenger Car Vehicle Inspection Procedure. Apparently the dealer would make sure everything was cool, the car was ready to rock, and this is the paper that came from this very vehicle. In fact, here is the title uh, right here, and the car was sold here in September 27th, 1971. Kind of cool, man. You know, uh, Marlon Wetzel of New Oxford, Pennsylvania. Uh, kind of cool. And the encumbrance, Alice Chalmers, York Credit Union. Alice Chalmers, Alice Chalmers, of course, made tractors, and uh, they had a couple of plants in Pennsylvania. Maybe this guy was an employee at Alice Chalmers and used the credit union to help finance his brand new Chevy Malibu. And one final thing, it's kind of cool here, as the government got more and more involved in automotive design, they mandated all new cars had to have information on braking time. Chevrolet Consumer Information, Chevelle Malibu, 1971, with drum brakes, right? So this right here gives data on stopping distances. And I've seen these in Chryslers and Fords from 1971. It was a mandated thing. It gave you data on how much pace, passing ability you had, and of course also braking ability, but again, specific this one to cars with drum brakes. And we can see right here, tire load data. Interesting stuff, very original. It speaks to this car's, well, original uh, origins with drum brakes. So it now has discs. So more than likely, because of the drum brakes, this was not a super sport, but doesn't matter. It was a V8 car, has a 134 VIN prefix, so V8 then, V8 now. But just a beautiful example of a mid-sized classic Chevrolet. And again, keep in mind, 72 was the final year for this body style, 73 brought the colonnade family with the big, thick B-pillars, rollover protection built in, no more convertibles. With that said, just a nice example of a respectful treatment of a nifty Chevrolet Chevelle from 1971 with some 1980s add-ons. Cool stuff.